Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. How's everybody doing out there? Hey, we're in studio. We got a big audience. Everybody applaud. <laughs> all right. Look at them all. Yeah. See, an actual audience. This is about as many people as we can fit in here. But our guest tonight is the one and only Jason Lanier White. Say hello, Jason. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> all right. Woo! We're going to talk about all the different things that you do, which mm. is quite a, quite a, a spectrum of things in, in the entertainment and voiceover and on camera and all sorts of stuff. So if you have a question for Jason, put it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook Live or YouTube Live or however you're watching this, you know, if you're watching it on TV, I'll be really impressed. <laughs> or if it's beaming in from a Chinese weather balloon. <laughs> yeah, from a balloon. Yeah, exactly a right. Balloon. So, <laughs> you know, someone's going to watch this in two years and go, weather what? Balloon. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's time for voiceover body shop right now. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Wedham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. <laughs> should have told you guys that's your part <laughs> oh no what are you gonna do? now you know later we'll do it again later anyway <laughs> uh the sound will be perfect tonight the colors look absolutely magnificent for some reason I, you know it's because all you guys who support us out there and make sure that technologically this thing is just way above everybody else of course we've been doing a webcast for almost 12 years you know before they people knew what webcasting was sometimes we get it right and, and occasionally <laughs> once in a while it seems to seems to work really together well. anyway our guest tonight is our good friend jason lanier white uh who is he's a guy that does just about everything he's an award-winning actor we have to ask which awards you've won uh voiceover artist you do a lot of motion capture stuff and mm -hmm. things like that let's welcome him to voiceover body shop jason lanier white Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. This is cool. I've been watching the show for years, so to actually be here as, as a guest is awesome. It's fun to have it's you. It's amazing, here. yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into this not so business and all the different <laughs> things that you're doing. Um, I do love to talk. If you've met me in person or online, you you know that is true <laughs> very obvious. much uh, <laughs> you're a native angelino too i am born and raised wow, here that's ra rare from la we're a rarity uh i thought i was going to be a lawyer at the age of four because i knew i liked to yap so i saw people on tv and movies and television shows thinking that oh that person talking in front of everybody that's what i would like to do I and then you found out there's other ways to make things <laughs> up <Yeah. laughs> i didn't really care about the legal side i just wanted to talk in front of people so uh, we fast forward to, I think I was nine and some change, and I started to get really involved into my high, uh, not high school, but my elementary school's different projects that they had, uh, plays that we would put on. I got really into, I love just the thought of, this will be cool, everyone will watch us, we get to perform, we get to tell the story our way. I thought it was very, really fascinating. Then, about the age, I think I was 10 or 11, and my mom heard on the radio, if your child is outgoing, blah, 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 bring them to Universal Studios, to the Marriott Hotel. There's going to be um, Beverly Hills Studios. It's going to have a showcase in Beverly Hills Studios. For those of you who don't know, it's already been gone. Uh, they were basically like, what's the equivalent? Uh, sort of like, I guess, a trade school for actors. You could go there a for guild. modeling. A yeah, guild. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. a specialty kind of uh, foray. Uh, into the world of the entertainment industry from the actor's perspective. So they taught acting, theater, and modeling. Uh, but all your instructors were people you saw on TV and movies every day. 
So you'd see the guy on Melrose Place in the latest episode, and then tomorrow, the next day, he was teaching you. He was teaching you how to book on camera jobs. And then everybody that was blowing up in commercials at the time in the 90s, those were your instructors. So they would teach you how to book Doritos and Pepsi and all this stuff. So it was great. Uh, went through that, did, uh, did well, got an agent manager out of that, and started my career in the on-camera world. Um, and for young men at that time, and this still happens, around age 17 to 22, we kind of hit a plateau there's not too many roles for boys at that age. Right. Usually you can play the youngest son or the oldest son or oldest nephew or whatever. There's just not that many roles. So it kind of fizzled out with that. And then growing up, my brother and I, we, like everyone else, you emulate family members, teachers. I used to call, <laughs> I used to call my friends' parents or leave voicemails for them as the teachers, changing my voice uh, so that they could skip <laughs> classes and get out of school. And it would always work. Um, I never thought, I, I thought voice acting is where actors went to die. Because it was oh, wow. so, it must be so easy. I thought oh, wow. on cameras. So, really some of us think that actually. <laughs> when I first started. So I never thought it was, I just thought, I, I will do that if I want to. If things get really bad <laughs> in the acting world, then I'll just do voiceover. It's the exact opposite. It's the hardest form of acting I've ever done. Um, stumbled onto it in 2012, started taking classes and fell in love with it. My brain loves to learn. And I love the fact that there was something I knew nothing about. I think I did my very first voiceover audition on voice one, two, three, sometime in 2012. And it took me an hour to do a 30 second spot. Mm. I would record and listen back. And I was horrendous. I sucked. I probably still suck. But, but did I, you book it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't even know why I sucked. I just had to listen back and I would do take after take. And listen back, and I, I, I didn't know where to start. I just knew this is not good. What's dangerous is if you book on that very first thing, because then you get <laughs> yeah, a big oh, head. Yeah. Yeah. And we know lots of people I'm that's a natural. happened to. Yeah. Oh, this is easy. Yeah, yeah. I think I dangerous. booked my third audition, and it was for a college student. I think I made thirty dollars off that, mm -hmm. and it was a Bruce Lee sound alike, something I grew up. I idolized him. Grew up watching mm -hmm. his stuff. So um, I don't know if I did it justice, but when I listen back now. It's not as bad as I thought. It's also not as good as I thought it was, George. Um, and I just started dibbling and dabbling and listening to every podcast. I started doing what I call pac manning I was just ingesting media, uh, everything. Stumbled onto you guys. Started going to conferences and um, just fell in love with VO. I fell in love with the fact that there's so many different, I call them guilds or I feel like um, mm. having a career as an actor is your it's like a video game or a fantasy world where I feel like I'm a, a lovable bard <laughs> or a rogue and I will stumble into a tavern. This might be the audiobook tavern. It's a very cool tavern. Might not be my type of folks. So I'll continue my journey until I get to the video game or, you know, the video game guild or I travel well, over now to... They're called, now they called Facebook groups. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or, or the Facebook groups. Right, yes. yeah. Or, or LinkedIn groups. <laughs> or LinkedIn groups. Or, or workout groups. <laughs> <laughs> a funny story. I... Recently took my girlfriend on New Year's Eve. There's a blockbuster bar uh, in West Hollywood where it looks like a blockbuster on the inside and outside. And we went there for New Year's Eve. And one of the commercials I was in in the 90s was <laughs> playing on the TVs that they had there. <laughs> oh, that's... And I was at the bar and there's a random guy next to me I don't know, another random guy to the right of me I don't know, and the bartender. And I shouted, oh my God, that's me! Dude. And all three of them <laughs> equally could not care less. I was talking to strangers, look at... Ah! Hey, you're in Hollywood. That's that's the way it is here. My girlfriend right? is talking to a random couple, and I was just, ah, ah, started like elating because I forgot all about that commercial. But um, on camera was how I started my my journey. Yeah, yeah. But you're you're doing all sorts of stuff, though. I mean, you're you've you're done the on camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're doing the voiceover work, and you're 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 kicking butt with that. You're also doing mocap. I mean, how do you, how is it that you do all these things? I mean, did you have a plan? to do all of these different genres and so i that's a great question um i just recently as in last week found the term and of course already forgotten it i was watching a youtube <laughs> video but there's a gene that some humans have when they're born it gets activated everyone has this gene within their lineage within their dna but it's the what is what did the young lady say on the video it's i'll just call it the hustle gene mm. um but it's the, the non-failure gene. You see mm. something and you think, huh, it can't be that hard. I'll just mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. 
and I'll fail forward. And what I need to learn, I'll learn on my way to doing the thing or I'll find other people who have done it. I'll ask them questions. And if they're not into that, I'll find books that people who've done it written or That's vice just versa. That's adjacent to the lemming gene. Mm, yes. <laughs> I'll just follow this person blindly. And I've always thought, what's the worst that could happen? You know, it, the yeah. worst thing that could happen is that I fail at something, but yeah. I'm, I'm, we all fail at tying our shoes when you're really young. We all fail at m certain parts of math. We all Getting fail really at writing failing, everything, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing failures ventured, the, nothing gained. Yeah. Failure is the tuition of success. Oh, so yeah. I, whatever gene that is, I possess that. And even to this day, it's not delusions of grandeur, but it's along the lines. I, my brain literally thinks, well, that person's human. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, somehow I can do it. Maybe not in the exact same way, but I have to figure out how they did it. Oh, their dad is the director. That's how they got in. Well, I don't have anyone in my family that's a part of that mm -hmm. industry and that entertainment or in that field. But I wonder if I can get in this way. Um, I'm going to date myself, but if you remember... If you remember the very opening scene of Look Who's Talking, there's the one egg and the millions of sperm are trying to get into that one egg. <laughs> That's the on-camera world. There's one job and we're all, you know, <laughs> using swords and blasters mm -hmm. and lightsabers fighting to get that one job. And it was explained to me in voiceover, there's more work than there are people that are qualified to do it. So there's more jobs than there are actors that can actually do the jobs. And just mm. that, when I learned that, it just took all this weight and this anxiety off me. And now, if there's an opportunity and I feel like I can do it justice, then I'll put my name in the, in the hat and I'll wait until I'm called. And if it's something that I honestly feel that I can't do well 100%, if it's going to be impeding the project, I'll step back and shoot it over to another colleague. But that's been my bread and butter for life. I just kind of just... I go, well, let's try it. I roll my sleeves up and go, let's try our best and see how we can make this a, a part of our career, a part of our life, a new hobby, a new skill so, in some type of way. Yeah. If you're just joining us, you've missed a lot already. Uh, our guest is Jason Lanier White, and we're having essentially a metaphor festival. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I talk in analogies. I speak in metaphors and so, so do I. Well, that's why we, we relate so well. Um, if you've got a question for Jason about all of these different genres that he works, type it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook or you're on YouTube Live. And Jeff Holman, who sits just to the left of me, will be taking down all these questions and we'll be able to ask those in just a little bit. So get in there. Ask your questions because we want to hear from you. That's what this show is all about. So, you know, you talk about, I'm going to do this. How did you physically implement each one of these genres and get into them and, and, and find success in all of them? Mm. Uh, with on camera, um, being an 80s kid, well, that's all we did was grow up, you know, watching television from the time you wake up to the time <laughs> you go to sleep. Yeah. And so it was I, like that in the 60s. too. Right? <laughs> yes. So I always had these emulations that I would just gravitate or anchor to. I would, uh, I would hear the director say something in director language and I would translate it to, oh, this is just like that scene in that show that I love with this and now, or this is just like the episode of Knight Rider when Michael Knight does that and David Hasselhoff acts, okay, I'll do that, but my version of it. So I had all these anchors to kind of factor towards. Uh, with VO, I was impressed and blown away with how much information is out there. There's, and even more so now, yeah. there's podcasts, there's books, I mean, you name it. And there's some redundancies, but everyone, I look at it as Kung Fu schools. Everyone has something cool to teach you at each school. You might learn kicks at this one school or punches or throws at these different schools. So, and everyone's style may or may not mesh with your own. And to me, it's fun to learn what this teacher or this coach is saying and going to workout groups and everyone is training at different places and you get to hear everyone's dif different experiences and takes on things and you just steal and take and make it work for you. With mocap, I had a gigantic, I'm a very humble person, but with mocap, I had a gigantic chip on my shoulder. Mm. I thought, oh, I'm a career martial artist. I'm a break dancer. I do this now. I'll walk in. I'll kill it. I'll learn what I need to learn. I'll walk out. <laughs> the first hour, I felt smaller than Ant-Man. I didn't know anything. I didn't yeah. know any of the terminology, the jar. I mean, you name it. How did you I, get into there in the first place? Uh, I saw, randomly on Facebook, a bunch of my colleagues were doing a ton of mocap. They were taking training in classes. I didn't even know it existed. I thought you had to be a special person. When, um, Like most people, 
when you're small and you watch someone on TV, you think, I would love to do that, but that person's <laughs> special. They're not mm. like me. They're, I'm sure they're, their dad was Zeus and their mom is Hera. That's why they're on TV. <laughs> they're a god, right? That, that would explain a yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> they have powers. That's why they're doing what they're doing. Um, so until I saw that, did I know it was accessible? I signed up for the class, introductory class, uh, with Richard Dorton. He's one of my mentors uh, for motion capture. He's been doing mocap for going on 25 years. He was the first guy in L.A. to do mocap um, wow. and create a career. So I've seen him, been him, killed him, saved him, you name it, all through video <laughs> games. So when I met him, my fangirl, ah, Ringo! You know, it's like meeting the Beatles <laughs> at that time. Like, ah, Ringo! No one cheers, no one screams for Ringo. Um, <laughs> but upon learning and spending time in that class for the first hour, I got humbled and realized I know nothing about this world. Mm. It has nothing to do with the movement at all. It has to do with character breakdown and why are you moving? Why are you doing this movement? The movement's not important. Why are you doing this movement? Once I learned it from that aspect, again, my brain loves to learn. I just dove headfirst into everything I could ingest about motion capture. Yeah, it's it's acting. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. but you're you're acting in this void. Yes, is that, is that kind of weird? Yes, it is. Um, mm -hmm. With theater, you have to project and you have to always face forward because the audience is looking at you, and you pretend right. they're not there, unless in certain projects or you know yeah. shows where you talk to the audience i call that zach morrison uh zach wait what is that what is that his name zach morris from Efron? no 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 uh zach no. saved by the bell zach morris that morris zach was his Efron. last name zach, zach efron, efron. Zach efron. Zach efron. Okay. okay is that okay. breaking the someone will, <laughs> no, breaking someone will find there is out. no wall Preppy. but anyway zach and saved yeah. by the bell would stop or let's oh, better yet oh, deadpool oh, deadpool oh, always stops and talks to the audience right or on a side um and then on camera you have yeah billions of people around you have to pretend they're not there Mocap is a mix of, of motion capture is a mixture of both. You have mm -hmm. people touching you and pulling you places. You have people throwing things at you, walking around. You have to pretend they're not there. There's a virtual camera guy who is this close to your face. You have to, it, it, you will have an intimate scene with your partner and you two are supposed to hug and kiss and embrace, but <laughs> they have a head cam on and so do you and you can't get this close. And there's five different people telling you, you better not bump that head cam. There's a sound guy, there's a video guy, there's a head cam guy, there's a mic guy, and oh, everyone God. is like, you better not bump those head cams, but you're supposed to embrace. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's very, it's, um, do you very ever challenging. See, do you ever see what you're doing? Zach Morris. Zach Morris. Right. <laughs> do you ever see what you're doing on a monitor somewhere, or is that, yes. would that be totally distracting and mess you up? Uh, to some performers it is, because uh, many times you get to see yourself in real time as the character that you're portraying. So you're... I'm 5'10", but you can be a giant who's, you know, 12'9", so standing around, walking systems around. systems are so powerful now. They can render your character in real time. You're controlling a giant puppet. To me, it's, it's helpful to see puppeteer. the scale because it helps you move as that character better instead of seeing it on a 2D piece sure. of paper and then trying to bring it to life. Yeah. Uh, to get back to your question, you have to have extremely strong imagination muscles. Because nothing is there. Most people fail at the improv game of making a cup of tea. The minute they pour the tea, the kettle evaporates. <laughs> they always pour the tea, and they right before they take a sip, the kettle just disappears. They always forget to put it down. Mm. It's those little things that will stop mm. you from, or that is those little things that will keep you doing take after take after take after take. Right. It's remembering those things. You know, I put this thing down here. Crap. Did I put it on this side or that side? Mm. Uh, you have to remember. So right. it's just repetition, mileage, wow. like with everything. And, and you're wearing a green suit and ping pong balls. Yes, right? you have a, <laughs> a Lycra suit on and uh, with all the balls on it, uh, all the trackers, sometimes trackers or markers on your face, and sometimes a head cam and markers, uh, everything. You can use props, weapons, but it's so freeing. You get to go back to being three, four years old where your imagination is key. And the more vivid you can create that world, the more fun you have as a performer. And something I feel that doesn't get out there enough about motion capture is that it's very collaborative. The directors, they talk about Nolan North on the set of, um, I think it's The Dark Knight. With the, was that the one with Heath Leather, Ledger? The Joker one? Is that the, I yeah. think it's The Dark Knight. Where they would ask Nolan, uh, hey, uh, uh, we've been in this room for a while. How long have we been in here? And he'll say, he's the director. And he'll say, you know, I hadn't thought about that. How long do you guys think you've been in here? So they say the, the, 
the movie was very collaborative like that. Motion captures like that. The director will give you your your lines and how you're supposed to move and, and interact with certain things, but they're looking for your input as well. And they're looking for you to bring that character to life. And I love that. I love the fact that with on camera, many times it is just stand here, say this, this person walks here, and then you guys say this, and then you leave. Do it the way I asked you to do it. With mocap, it's very collaborative. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Okay, so you're doing on camera. Mm -hmm. You're doing voiceover. You're doing mocap. Anything else that we should know about? Uh, I direct <laughs> and okay. I help cast from time to time. Different projects, wow. yes. Lots of uh, mocap directing within like the last two two years. Yeah. Right when COVID hit, uh, I own Dropship Studios LA. Uh, we do what large studios do on a smaller scale. Basically, um, independent video game programmers and developers will think, hmm, we would love mocap in our game, but we can't afford what Activision and Electronic Arts can afford. So I guess we just can't do it, but they'll find companies like mine or we reach out to them and say, well, how much is your budget? Here's a plan that fits that budget. It might only just be face cap that you can afford. It might just be motion capture. It might be performance capture, which is face, sound, likeness, your entire body, fingers and everything. And it's become extremely affordable, extremely affordable now to add motion capture to almost anything. That random iPhone does facial capture so well that you can just pop that right into a movie, video games, VR experiences, you name it. If you know how to do it right, it's nuts. Whoa. Yeah. Once again, we are talking with Jason Lanier White, who does everything. <laughs> <laughs> he probably even paints his own room. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. With the window closed and then passes out. <laughs> yeah, you, you got you, you, you to tape it just right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a question for him, uh, again, throw it in our chat room right now in Facebook Live or in YouTube Live. Mm -hmm. You know, And, of course, if you know who's going to be on, you can always write a question to us much earlier on. But you didn't have the chance to do that yet if you didn't do it. It's a life hack. I know. I like that, Dan. I yeah. Like so how do you keep all of these different things that you're doing straight? I, I take it you're a very well-organized person. No. But... Uh, <laughs> Not even All right. close. So explain how you do that. <laughs> okay. Um, what I love is, I love this question because it, it works for life. It, it helps you if you find out if you're a ninja or a pirate. Are you a morning person or a night person? For me, I'm a morning person. I love getting up early and I feel like I'm ready to start the day and I try to focus on what I need to do in what order. But I don't actually have a schedule that I link my time to. I know that there's certain things I need to do mm -hmm. and this is going to sound weird but as being an actor and being a Pisces Pisces are like ping pong or like um, uh, pinballs pinball. we're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we're over everywhere right I, I <laughs> but we're very creative um, when the moment strikes me that's when I do it so when I for instance if I know I have voiceover auditions to do instead of doing them in the order that they came in I'll however I'm feeling that day is how I tackle those auditions I say, you know, I don't feel really, I don't, I'm not 100% up, so I'll go ahead and do this Bank of America spot, or I'll try this, or I'm feeling good this morning. I got up, you know, walked the dog, I'm feeling great. Time to do some video game stuff. I'm very in tune with how I feel, my emotions, and where my body is. And instead of trying to dictate what I need to do, I just kind of let the day happen on its own. Um, yeah. And I use Siri like there is no tomorrow. I use Siri, Alexa, and Google. Always use those digital assistants. Um, a really good life hack, I've been doing this for years, is to get better at your reads on your own. Highlight the text and then have Siri, if you have an iPhone, uh, if not, if you have an Android, it's Bixby. Have Siri read the script to you. You can start directing her. She's going to say everything wrong. She's going to drop words. She's going to pause where <laughs> she's not supposed to pause. But she's t you're using her to teach you how not to say it. So you let her speak out everything and then... You direct her and say, oh, you dropped this, you didn't this, you railroaded the ellipses. But when you record your first take, you remember all that and you kill it on the first take all the time. And you just do that <laughs> with every act, single man. one. I've um, never heard anybody say that. Before. It is so That's much fun. And you put her to work. She's just in, the, in your phone hanging out, right? <laughs> give right. her something to do. She's just sitting there knitting or doing whatever she does when she's waiting for us to give her commands. <laughs> Be nice about it. Yes, she's a digital person. <laughs> Be nice. Um, if your Siri is a female, she could be a non-binary digital assistant mm -hmm. or a male assistant, whatever, however you prefer. Um, mine is uh, the average voice comes with it, but I put her to work. And then I have her and Alexa remind me. And sometimes they fight. Sometimes seriously, like, Jason, you have this mm. at three o'clock and Alexa will say, shut up. He has this at three o'clock. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wish. 
I'll turn you off. Well, I'll turn the TV on. You don't have access to the TV. <laughs> What's going on in the house, man? No, uh, <laughs> you're terrified. Um, but I, I tend, I tend to stay organized by not giving myself finites. Mm. I know something needs to be due before 8 a.m. So I, as long as I get it in before 8, I kind of let the day, I kind of go with the ebbs and flows. And I, I tend mm. to, that works for me. Okay. Mm. So you don't have like a big whiteboard or anything like that to keep you organized. I have two. Oh, and okay. Both like, yeah. There's doodles on them and they're both, <laughs> they're both blank. <laughs> I do use the, cal uh, the calendar. Yes, I use the, okay. um, the calendar that comes in installed in Mac yeah. with that. And uh, that's been very, very helpful right. with the reminders and whatnot. But I kind of tend to kind of just flow and do the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how old are you now? Uh, this month on the 21st, I will be 42. And I want to tell the audience, I know everyone's going through a tough time financially. No way. Uh, so <laughs> I've spoken um, with my family. And this year only, I will be accepting gifts that can start at $300 <laughs> <laughs> and go up from there. So if you would like to give me a gift they yeah. need to start yeah. at 299 and up so usually it's 500 or more so this year it's okay they, get, they gotta do a group buy first and then send you the whole yeah. thing. yes yes yeah. i i only ask because you know if you can keep all this stuff in your head in the next five years <laughs> good luck get it it's not gonna happen <laughs> good luck absolutely <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Jason Lanier White, and we're talking about all the things that he does in the voiceover world and mocap and on camera. And again, if you got a question for him based on all this stuff that we've been talking about, throw it in the chat room right now. So you, I've, I've, I've been noticing that you, you had a group called Voxer Knots. Yes. I, you know, and so yes. I, I assume that that is still sort of there but that's sort of morphed into this company you've yes, got into dropship studios la vox yeah. or Nots is all about vox meaning voice is all about getting some of the best training at affordable actor prices um mm -hmm. i was doing a lot of adr and looping training uh 50 per person i think we're maxed out at 12 people and this was in person i think we started in 2017 and went up to about 2020 or so uh, right before COVID happened and you would come from seven to 10 and I had a bunch of scenarios and it was a day in the life of doing mm. ADR and looping. Um, a quick, small rendition of that. What ADR is, it means is a three or four. I don't have to, I'm not telling you guys, you guys know, <laughs> you guys wrote the book on it. <laughs> uh, audio dialogue replacement, or there's like three other. Automated dialogue replacement. Right. Yes. Right. Automatic dialogue replacement. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the background voices. Uh, you watch Friends at home and you notice that only Rachel and Ross are talking, right, in the coffee shop. You can't hear anyone else. Those actors are being quiet. And later on when the, uh, the episode is edited down, it goes to actors such as myself and nine other of us, uh, and we start to put in things that we would think the background actors would say. It's very lucrative. Um, back in the day, this was looked down upon because it was yeah. along the lines of being an extra, but vo vocally. Oh, yeah. oh my God. But <laughs> once it got out that you get residuals on these, mm. just imagine residuals. if you were looping or doing ADR for the yes. Saved by the Bell franchise, right? Those get syndicated and you are just still making money. Residual checks are coming, even though the show's been off air for 20 years, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, in, it's very lucrative. And this happens with movies, television shows, you name it. So I do a lot of that. It's, it's basically like an actor's nine to five. And if you're an amazing improver, it doesn't mean you're good at looping. If you're extremely good on camera, it doesn't mean you're good at looping and vice versa. So it's, it's a very finite, small niche to get in there. But it has become so lucrative. I love it. It's amazing. You work those muscles every day, which is the improv muscles, one of the foundations of acting. And so many different projects, you get to meet different people and get, understand their experiences and whatnot. And I forgot what the question was. Well, it's like, <laughs> well, the question was, is how do you keep it all straight? There we and, go. Yes. And, and also that uh, you're teaching a lot of these things. And yes. You've got, you've got the meetup group or do people meet up or? Now we do it online. Oh, we're yeah. going to be starting this month of going back to ADR and looping because most of it is now you can do it online. So overnight, we talk about um, the structuring of COVID. 90%, 95% of the time when you did loop, you would have to go into the physical studios. Well, literally overnight. That stopped. So now I'm looping with people from New York, people uh, in Spain, you name it. All, we're all working on the same project. And everyone's in their booth, their closet, you name it. And when you he watch it on the television or you see it on you know, your phone or movies, mm. you can't tell. The way they've been mixing them down now, you mm. cannot tell. Yeah. Um, 
the show Lovecraft Country. Yeah. Uh, didn't get a second season, but we did four episodes in person, and the other, the rest of the six, we did all individually at home. Right. And I forget, I think it's Tim, I can't remember his last name at the moment. Uh, he's an amazing sound director. He won an Emmy for that show. Yeah. And when you listen to it, you cannot tell that the it's... People are all in yeah, it, Not at all. And yeah. it is mixed so well. Yeah. And when I wow. watched it myself, I thought, man, this is good. And I would hear myself and my colleagues and think, I remember when I literally watched on Zoom when she said this or did this speech yeah. or, and it didn't sound like this. It's ins insane. And they were having a week to get this stuff up, less than a week. Yeah. We'd work well. on a Monday and that episode would be up by the following Monday. So that means they worked on it that entire week That's and crazy. just boom. So it's insane on where we are. Um, but yeah. that training is still offered. And uh, yeah, we do ADR, we do mocap training. That's more in-person stuff. But yeah. yeah. All right. As the Vox Knots in a nutshell. All right. Hey, if you got a question, we still have room for a few more, so get them in there in the chat room. We're talking with Jason Lanier White, and we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop right after this. Yeah. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. From VoiceOverEssentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. The voiceover recording sign, get not one, but two remotes, is about to end. Two remotes makes the sign even more valuable, since your significant others can send you messages as well. Or, of course, you have a backup if the dog decides to bury this cool thing in the backyard. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. <laughs> now we're going to do an in-studio commercial for Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. They have so many amazing tools that are used in studio production remotely around the world every single day, but the one that the voice actors really need to know about is Source Connect. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. You can go to source-elements.com and get a demo and start familiarizing yourself with the technology. It basically is super, super high quality audio Zoom. No video, audio only. Now it has a video component. You can actually have a video on your computer that plays back whenever you're doing your take. But that's not used that often in voiceover. The distraction of video isn't necessary for most everything out there. It's just you talking, you're listening to the director. You might have the, you know, the client patched in from the studio on the other end so you can hear them asking questions. But other than that, it feels like you're working in a studio. It's just you're in your own booth and they're somewhere else. And that's Source Connect. And if you, again, get, a, get signed up, head over to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial and get familiarized. If you need any help, we can help you at georgethe.tech, but they also have an incredible amount of resources to get you up to speed. Thanks so much, Source Elements, and let's get back to it. There's so many more questions for Jason. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches, and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom, VOBS.TV. We are back here at Voice Over Body Shop. Our guest is Jason 
Lanier White, who has been telling us about his amazing career, and you're just still a kid. So we <laughs> we got a lot of stuff coming up for him, which is going to be really cool. We've got a lot of questions, mm-hmm. right? Right, Jeff? That's right. Okay, we got lots of questions for you, George. Take right. the first one from Wishbone. Yes, Wishbone from Wishbone from the YouTube's. Um, Jason, what's your favorite most recent role or really experience with voice acting, and why? Huh. Um. <laughs> uh, there was a, a big game that I was up for and we did a I did an audition it came from my agents and I got a call back the call back was in my my booth I did it in my booth it zoomed in with everyone I got the role and just found out last week the game is cancelled so oh, <laughs> it's man. one of the best <laughs> oh, franchises man. and video games that I love but it happens but it goes to show that you never know it's out of our hands you know so I, I, I was bummed for about I do the five minute rule. I was bummed. Mm. I allowed myself to be bummed for five minutes. And then I thought, well, Mm. hey, if I did it Mm. once, hopefully I can do it again. I will do it again. Mm. And I did a great job on that audition. I felt I was the character. I prepared for it. I was very proud of myself that the curveballs they threw at me, I was still able to hit. Not everything was a home run, but I was very proud of myself of how prepared I was. Yeah. Right. And um, I would have yeah. to say it was that. So <laughs> it would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, when, you, when you're auditioning and you do that stuff and you know you did it well, mm. they remember. They yes. may not, you may not be right for that particular part. Yes. But they'll go, oh, wait, you know, we're doing this one. You know, that Jason Lanier White was really good when he did that. So. And that happens a lot. That happens sure. frequently, which I'm grateful for. Oh, we all are. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. We got a question from Grace Newton. Uh, Until I can fund coaching, Mm -hmm. what can I be doing daily to prepare for voice acting in video games? Got you. Uh, This is for everybody of every genre, genre if you want to learn, no matter what you want to learn. Exhaust your free resources all the time. Podcasts. Uh, You're going to get bored. You're going to get tired. It's going to get frustrating because not all the information out there is easily ingestible. Sometimes people have great info and they don't know how to relay it and vice versa. But go through YouTube, go through podcasts. Every time you drive or you walk somewhere, you should have your earbuds, headphones in, and you should be listening to a podcast of someone talking about whatever that is. You will be surprised on how many tidbits that you wind up picking up. As long as you learn at least one thing, it doesn't matter how how much of the information you've al- you already know, you've already attained. Even yeah. if there's one thing that's new or a different spin on it, that might be what you need for it to click. Uh, exhaust those resources. Watch video game trailers. Watch the trailers and watch the cutscenes. Cutscenes are the miniature movies in the video games themselves. You don't have to be a gamer to be in video games, but you have to know the genre. If someone says, okay, I need you to say this line as if you're yelling to the Master Chief and the Covenant are behind you shooting and blasting the ship up, the Pelican up, you need to know what all those words mean. Mm. I need to know what the hell a Master Chief is. I need to know what a Pelican is, and I need to know what the Covenant is. If you don't know what any of those are, <laughs> there's a good way of starting. Let's, let's go and research Halo. What's the story of Halo? Leave it on in the background. YouTube will just do its thing while you cook dinner and whatever it is that you, you do. Do laundry, and you <laughs> learn and soak it up. Um, our brains are wired to fluctuate between our senses when we're already doing something. That's why if you're vacuuming or doing dishes or if you're um, doing laundry, but you have something on in the background, your body is physically involved in a task, which means that it's going to allocate more energy to your ears. So it means you can actually do a lot deep, a deeper thinking when your body is used to, when your body is physically doing something. Hmm. Uh, If you're vacuuming, if you're doing the dishes, drying the dishes, taking them out of the dishwasher or doing them or whatever. Doing something you're... Yes. Something repetitive. Some, well, but something repetitive. Yes. Something you've definitely. Done a, a thousand Clean times. the fish tank or swiffering yeah. or something. If your body has a task to do, mm. the brain can kind of allocate more information to your other mm. tasks. You can taste food better. You can retain knowledge better from what you hear. Your ears perk up better. It mm. just... Whatever's monotonous, try to do these things. Try to leave a podcast or a YouTube video playing on in the background. And then project, project, project. One of the easiest ways to get in games is to do what we call battle chatter. I'm not going to do one now, but um, imagine when you say something, your the words coming out of your mouth are flying in front of you. They're coming out so fast. They're like bullets going through a wall. So a yell or a scream would be, oh my God, he's going to kill us. Battle chatter is a projected yell. It's 
Swapping mags. Reloading. Watch the flank. It's very short and sweet and compact. Go from your diaphragm and don't use your throat. Push from the tummy. If you scream and turn to your left or right and you feel any uh, discomfort or pain, you're screaming from the wrong area. You want to scream from your chest or your tummy. If you can get battle chatter down well and do those in auditions, that'll be, that's like your background work for video games. They'll call you and we call it killing. Uh, they'll call you and they'll, they'll kill you, which just means you get worked to exhaustion <laughs> uh, to do battle chatter. And you will be that guy who's, or that woman or that person who's just yelling, reloading. This and that. Uh, I did a fireman, a firefighter video game where it was 10 hours. It was broken up into three sessions, two four-hour sessions and one, fi <laughs> one, one hour session. And it was... <laughs> the it roof was is collapsing. For, yeah, they get stuff like that. It was... Uh, <laughs> we can't get in. We got in. We, <laughs> we're in. I mean, you. it was yeah. just page after page of, yeah. I need the fire axe. I need the fire hose. And each one has to be short, sweet, and sad as if you're really in front of a blazing fire trying to save someone. And even if yeah. you do it at a nine, they'll tell you that was great. We need a 10, push it up even more. So that's kind of how you get your foot into games. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. I, a follow up to that. I mean, I'm sure nobody's asked it yet, but I'll ask it. Sure. Because you were mentioning before that people are doing it from all over the place, but does it help to be here in Southern California to be doing that type of work? You know, whether it's mm -hmm. video games or mocap or stuff like that. I love this question because it's never the answer people think it's going to be. That's why I what asked it is. It. So you have to, you should have a foothold in any genre and in any location you want to work in. It doesn't mean you have to live there. You should know people and have friends. Be, start with the Facebook group. Start with Instagram. Start with knowing that community. Mm. If you can afford to travel to those areas and go to a conference mm. or something like that do that you should have a, a foothold to where at least let's say out of 400 people five to ten people know vaguely of you oh that's the jason guy he doesn't live here in amsterdam but we've met him a couple <laughs> of years ago yes yeah, shoot him an audition or yeah 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 he might have to record in la but we have we know of him that's all you need it's just a foothold it's just like when you used to crash in your cousin's couch <laughs> mm -hmm. at any point in time mm -hmm. you used to crash in your cousin's cousin's couch that's what you do go to those conferences go to those even you know the zoom meetups start doing that there are so many free resources of how you can get notoriety and get your name out there and solidified mm -hmm. and linked up with something that you want to do you know when i think of john smith i immediately think of random default person or name you know it's that's what you want to <laughs> do with your name it of course helps to live in texas if you want to buy and own your own ranch and have tons of horses out there but if you don't you can always fly out to texas or at least start learning you know um what are some of the adjacent areas that feed into texas what are some of the companies that feed into owning a ranch oh there's a feed store that is right here in my neighborhood i can build a relationship with that feed store and inadvertently somehow it'll help me get my foothold into Texas so I can build my ranch. Same thing for video games. I need to get a foothold in Los Angeles somehow. And it doesn't have to be games. As actors, we should be mm. quantifying. I may meet somebody in the mocap world on camera theater that helps me get a voiceover video game job, right? So it's n we never arise at our destination the way we think we're going to. It's always different. Many times it's cooler. Many times we think, um, oh, I'll just drive up and show up where, you know, however you get that project or that job, you might show up like the, the Rocketeer or with the Jetpack or Iron Man. So always be open um, to figuring out on different avenues to, to the end goal, for yeah. sure. You don't have to live in the area. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so Catherine, J, of course, I gave the lead into this question. Mm -hmm. but she's like, what is the most difficult part about doing video games? Uh, I would say, to be honest, it's, it's synonymous. It is exactly the hardest part of any VO job, any acting job is it's the director. Many times you walk in and they tell you, they don't tell you much and you have to have your imagination already at a hundred percent. You have to fill in the blanks sometimes. And this just, just isn't within the game world. Many times the director is really tired. Um, there may be four people online via zoom. And the writer could be there as well as the director is with you there physically and everybody needs something different. And you as an actor, you may do take after take after take. And the very second, first or second take may be exactly what they needed or wanted. 
But for whatever reason, everyone wants a salad bar. They want a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You have to be able mm. to just keep that ego down and say, I am a part of the puzzle. I am not the overall piece. Let's just go. You have to, have to keep your stamina up. I think for me, that was a tough, a tough one was I would burn out sometimes at three hours because we would do a lot of shouting or different things. Or I'm a very active person. If I'm running in the game, then I try to run in the actual booth to get the sound coming out. Mm. And when you're doing that multiple times, you do get tired. And sometimes there's too many ki cooks in the kitchen and stuff is coming out and it, <laughs> nothing tastes good. <laughs> and you just have to sit there and say, it's my job to just be the sous chef. Here are the ingredients. I'll make this same dish 50 times. Here it is. It's slightly different each time. Hmm. I would say that's the toughest part is yeah. understanding that humans are still at the helm and we have to figure out on how we navigate each person's different personality because it's they're going to tell you yay or nay to go to the next line or when you're ultimately done. Mm. It's like a mm. paramilitary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Holman go, gets go, the next go, question. Go. An interesting Jeff. one. Yeah. George, go ahead. You, well, I you guess can I can read it. I mean, yeah, Jeff, you, you want to read, read it? it? <laughs> yeah, all right, so please. Point the mic at them, man. <laughs> here, let me just got that loosen, this, loosen this up. Okay, go for it. Have you ever done mocap remotely in your own studio, like in front of your own green screen, mm -hmm. connected to a studio or something like that? Yes, and believe it or not, um, as long the only the only technical issues you run into is not having enough cameras. If you have at least two mm. so that they can see a wide shot and then a closer one from about waist up. Believe it or not, clients get, you, you see them do this when the session starts and then the moment they see you move and they see your skeleton move or uh, uh, interpretation of you in the mocap suit digitally, they go, oh, okay, now we get it. That's exactly how people are going to feel about the metaverse. Right mm -hmm. now it sounds stupid, but when you put a headset on and you go to a digital Nike store, you pick up some shoes that aren't really there and you look down and see those shoes on your actual foot and your cartoon style foot and you can move your leg and look around and still purchase those shoes and in two days they show up, then everybody will be okay with the metaverse. That's where we're at. And how we do um, remote sessions is just like that. There's always at least one on the staff of clients that has a pushback of, hey, we should physically be there. You know, but how? You're in Amsterdam, you're in Turkey, you're in England. You're over in, you know, uh, another part uh, and everyone wants to be on at the same time with, you know, you're in Denmark with all the different time constraints, but let's just see how this works on the first one. And they're always blown away. And it's usually latency is the only issue. Sometimes, you know, the Zoom has to keep up. But other than that, you'd be surprised. They finished the, they finished the Call of Duty of 2020 that way. They called all the mocap people in, the performers in, hmm. started. Uh, in 2019, um, COVID happened, and then they shipped the X Sins suits out, which are mocap suits. You put the suit on, zip it up, take a couple of minutes, and fire it up, and you see in real time your movements into the cam, into the the computer and the software. And they remotely just directed each actor, each performer in their own homes. So you just oh, push the things out of the garage or out of the way in the family room and you see kids walking in the background and dad is just reloading an imaginary gun, you know, using a broomstick or whatever. And by the time the developers who had their work Man. cut out for them, you play the game, you cannot tell. You cannot tell 75% of the motion movements of that game or were done at home by performers right. in X in suits. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, but you got to be good at it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't need anything like that here because we have this wonderful set behind us. That's, uh... <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. The caviar was a little warm when yeah. I came in, but, no. it, you know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're trying to improve the craft service here a little bit. <laughs> uh, Kana Ali asks, Jason, how does someone get in touch with you directly? directly. <laughs> oh, um, call 1-900. <laughs> It's 75 cents per minute. Now, um, <laughs> you can go on the website and just type my name in, uh, jasonlanierwhite.com or actor, jasonlanierwhite.com or dot actor or something. I don't know. And uh, my <laughs> website will pop up. Well, one of those will show up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or you can, uh, if you're on Facebook, you can uh, contact me there through Messenger. If you're on Instagram, you can contact me on there. Just type in my full name. I pop up. Uh, I am not on social media too often these days so if you send me a message and i don't respond promptly promptly would be three days shoot a little emoji finger like this pointing up Bing! that way i'll get the message and 
I have messages in Instagram eight months old just because I just don't I don't see them. So I'm yeah. just not on social media too much mm -hmm. these days. Too yeah. many platforms to keep yeah. track of. There's a yeah. lot. There's a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Question. We've got about five minutes left. Question oh. from Terry Briscoe. Okay. George. I've taken part in some of your warm-ups to get ready for video game acting, and it's typically high-energy stuff. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's anything you do differently for a lower-energy kind of character, like an Eeyore or a Wednesday Adams, something like more drony. Got you. Yes. Okay. So you. this goes right back to auditioning, right? Many of us audition to book the job instead of doing the audition justice. Mm. There has to be a reason that character is moving either slowly or their thought process is slower or that they portray themselves in a very relaxed manner. If we go back to that way, uh, if we break the character down, like with Wednesday, Wednesday is very calculating. She's basically the female version of uh, Sherlock Holmes. She sees everything. She's like Batman. She mm. sees everything and then chooses her response based on who she's talking to, how much she cares, and what she wants to say. Eeyore is slower because he, he doesn't process things slow. He doesn't care. <laughs> He'll just okay. tell you using the words, you're not going to care because no one cares to be around me because I'm mopey, but this is how I feel, man. You really want to know? And before he finishes a sentence as a kid watching that, you go, oh my God, he talks so slow. I'll speed it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's built into that character, right? That's built into that character. So if we go back and give ourselves a reason, here's the fun part. You're never wrong. You're never wrong. It's your interpretation on why you think that character is moving, talking, or portraying themselves in that manner. We can critically think and start to get deeper the more we think about why. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's all on us individually. There's no one right way or, you know, there's billions of, upon trillions of ways to go about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a time for a couple more here. Okay. Beatrice Ryan asks, and she's watching on YouTube, great Beatrice. Beatrice. Uh, is improv acting part of your background or in your current toolkit? I would yeah. hope so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, mm -hmm. uh, personally, improv, I think, is the, is the basis foundation for all acting because there's going to be times when even if all the words, even if the ad libs and the improvs are there in the script, there's going to be times when you're a human, you're going to reiterate or interpret something a little different than someone else is. And to be honest, it makes you less terrified and have less anxiety when you know, well, if I forget the line, I will be anxious, but I know I can improv something similar to what I'm supposed to say. Mm -hmm. And many times, or at least 50% of the time, it may be better than what's written. And you may have to go back and do the written line, but improv, improv, improv. And it doesn't have to be silly improv. It doesn't, I know when people hear improv, they think, oh God, I got to juggle, chain, pretend to juggle chainsaws or this and that. <laughs> it can be lyrical improv. Go on YouTube and put on chill hop, chill hop, a uh, lo-fi music and Start freestyling. This means lyrical improv. Try to make anything you say rhyme and just try to freestyle. It will open up your mind. It is very challenging and difficult to do, but it's so fun. And believe it or not, you'll start freestyling and rhyming much faster than you think. Hmm. If you can do that, that's 10 times harder than improv in front of people, in the booth, you name it. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. All right. One more question from Greg Cooper. George? Greg Cooper. Did you train at the same time for all these genres, or do you focus on one area and really mm. try to master it and then move on to the next genre? Are you good at focusing? <laughs> That's good. I am. I'm very good at focusing when it's something that has to do when I know that everyone else has um, an initiative involved in it. Um, I would say start with your background. With me, that's why I had a chip on my shoulder for mocap, was I thought I'm a, I'm a movement person, right? Mm. This will be easy. Mocap's right. all about movement. I'll just go in, I'll learn the terminology, and I'll just do the moves, and I'll take off, and, you know, thanks, and I'll just start my career into stardom. You're going <laughs> to sail. Yeah, yeah, I'll just sail, right? Sail. Hit autopilot and just hang out. Open a Coke and chill. Um, mm. But start with your background and really do think. You might have to ask family members, friends, colleagues, and they may tell you something you forgot. Yeah, I remember you took tap dance for, you know, six months when you were seven. You, oh, yeah, I have very good hand foot or uh, I'm pretty good with breaking down movements with my feet or my entire body because of that. That makes its way into everything you want to do. So start with the foundation of you. 
take a piece mm. of paper and write down all the things that you can do at a five out of a 10 scale, zero to 10, that's a five or higher. You will be surprised on how many things you do at a seven to 10 on that scale that can make their way into all of your acting. In my experience, most people have at least 30% of reserves in anything they do. When they do their best take, if they really stop and critically think about a couple of things and do one more take after that and really push, they usually have the best take of their life they've ever done because we're usually really timid and we don't want to push more. Mm -hmm. um, with me, I try to get things to where I feel proficient with them. Say, okay, I know nothing about firearms, so I take some classes on that. I feel like I can load, rack, and you know, uh, disassemble this firearm good enough with my eyes closed or open to where I feel proficient if I were to perform this in someone in front of someone else. And I try not to master things because they're always changing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mastered my Apollo audio interface and, you know, four months, a new one came out. I was like, damn, <laughs> I don't know how to use this one, you know? So, more update. <laughs> yeah. um, that's, my, that's my number one tagline that for myself. If I can do it in front of people and well to where no one goes, ah, see, he, nah, mm. then I know that it's time to move on. I'll go, okay, cool. I feel solid about this. Let me learn this part. And so I try not to master things on purpose because they always change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it's done. Jason. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for being for with us me. tonight. Hey, man. Thank you for having us. All right. <laughs> George will be, and I will be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for Tech Talk. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. In a, in a little bit. Hey, we are back. We are back. Because this is what we do. Jason Lanier, what fabulous talent and, yeah. and great at explaining things too. No, super. I mean, that, that was like a mini masterclass. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Next week on this very show, we will have Tech Talk number 96. They just keep adding up. Uh, and it's going to be interesting. We've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, I always and, find All stuff. next week, yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see. You've got... Um, Let's see what's going on here. We've got uh, you've got Tech Talk now on TikTok. Tech Talk on TikTok with quick less than one point five minute Tech. Talks. Yeah, tell I, us about it. I'm trying to keep them going once a week. I can't even keep that many happening. My kids way more, way better at keeping it consistent. Not me, but I promise you, if you do follow me on TikTok, 
I'm not going to flood your channel with, with just day in the life posts. I have no problem with all you voice actors that do this, but there's a million people that just tell you about literally their day and right. what they do. And it's a little boring. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I'm on TikTok and we got webinars ongoingly, constantly over at georgethetech.com slash webinars. And you right. can put in VOBS fan 10, VOBS fan 10 for 10% off all, all that right. stuff. Great. Here's our donors of the week. We have a new one, the Bristol Group. Bristol. Yes. Nice. And we got Grace Newton. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Uh, hey, join our mailing list, too. Thus, maybe some of you saw the mailing that got sent out this afternoon. Oh, yeah, I can watch VoiceOver Body Shop live tonight and ask my questions. So we try and get that out so you know what's going on. Uh, we also need to thank our sponsors. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. Not VoiceActorWebsites.com is still there, but now there's VoiceActor.com, which we'll get a chance to talk about. Great and, new thing. Yeah, and World-Voices.org. The Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. There's the president. Yes, I, I just happen to be in charge there. But anyway, uh, thanks to Jeff Holman, who's with us tonight, and uh, for getting all the questions in there. And Sue Merlino, who's uh, somewhere else, but she's directing. Thank you, Good Sue. Good job, Sue. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. We're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. If you've got tech questions, now would be a good time to throw them in the chat room because we do it live. And then all next week, you get to watch all the amazing stuff that we get to talk about right after this. Anyway, this is not an easy business. That's why we bring you great people like Jason Lanier White who can tell you all the things that you need to know to make it better. But when it comes to your sound, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. See you next time. Later.